Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum, where it's been a busy weekend down at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, in fact. I went down with the McLaren 675LT Spider, have driven it another probably 250 miles or so with some mixed weather, so sometimes enjoying it with the roof down, sometimes in the pouring rain, parked in a field for the last four days. It is absolutely filthy, covered in all sorts of rubbish. So today we need to get that cleaned up a little bit. It's actually, believe it or not, about five years old and running on Pirelli Trofeo Rs, which are not the best tires for muddy fields, believe me. But today we've got a few things going on, including two really quite exciting parcels that I'd like to unpack with you today. One is from Gumball 3000, an invitation to the 2022 Gumball 3000 rally and a few more cool bits and pieces in there too. The other is from Koenigsegg and I'm looking forward to showing you through that as well. So today we're here at the Schmuseum, there's a lot going on, let's get cracking on with it. First plan of action. I think we need to get these out of the way. Otherwise, the G Wagon isn't coming through here. <laughs> so, we'll get the G Wagon to start up. We're going to head over to the storage, I guess, to go collect some center parts. I still don't know where you want to put them, but we'll find the space. We will. Some, somehow, somewhere in here, we're going to have, well, we'll go get all the bits and pieces, load them up in the G, bring them over, and try and work out what we're going to do with those. So, bollards down. Let's go get this started. G Wagon time. Noisy start, as always. I feel like this is very cliche. We do it far too often, but the Akrapovich exhaust on the G63 sounds so good that every single start is one to enjoy. Let's hear this. sort out a few bits and pieces over the weekend, um, including a visit to the uh, service, something that was needed, but now onwards. The last things remain then, some center parts, the, well, wing, quarter panel, door. Where does a Christmas tree fit with this? <laughs> I've actually had that for a very long time, artificial Christmas tree and all the decorations. <laughs> Don't ask. with car parts, Tim. <laughs> Don't ask. At the museum, we'll have Christmas tree, skis, and the exhaust, the exhaust will need its own run. I actually managed to bring the Yaris exhaust in the Yaris, which is quite impressive. That is quite impressive. That that all fits. What do we get? Okay, the door is basically a run on its own. This is a run on its own. Well, no, you can get all of these parts. I don't know. What should we I, take? I think we need to start small. Let's start with the wing. All of see. these bits and see yes. what we can get. See how we go. This might not be the wisest thing in the world, but it's a very short run and we've got all of this in. We've got the door over the top of the quarter panel, the wheel arch and the parts of the wing looking obviously slightly sorry for themselves, but let's get all of these over to the barn. This is now transport duties. I'm holding the end of the wing <laughs> to make sure that we're safely making our way. This is one very full G63. Back at the barn, pulling in the G then, and we now have to unload all of that stuff that we've brought back with it and uh, work out, as Tom was saying earlier, where we're going to put it all. Eventually on the wall somewhere. Time to unload some bits and pieces from in here then. What's the safe way to do this? I think we need to work that out. Um, if we try th this part of the wing over the top. I must say I'm a bit disappointed that you didn't bring the Christmas tree. That will have to wait until next time. Yeah, so I still want to know why there's a Christmas tree there. <laughs> that does look a bit better no, cars and Christmas trees. So we have the main upper part of the wing, which is kind of breaking and cracking at that end. Yeah. The other part of the wing. This is like hoping we haven't destroyed a piece of G63 interior. It's one of the funny things. It is a seriously like, rugged off-road machine, but it's still like a luxury car with nice leather that you don't completely mess up and make dirty like this. Yeah, it's fine. It's all fine. It's what it's for. And now we've got the door. Oh gosh. <laughs> Those noises are concerning. No, wait, wait, hold on. We've done this wrong. We've done this wrong. Reverse, reverse. This has to come first. <laughs> that didn't sound good, did it? It did not. <laughs> the only good thing about carbon fiber is that it doesn't weigh very much. But the, um, the bad news. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> you get that to a point, let me come around. I think I've got it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Out we go, out we go. It's nice and light. There you go. Oh, look at that. Not too heavy. Probably the only G63 in the world that's ever transported a center door. How many times though? Multiple times. <laughs> probably the only center door that's been transported in a car of any form. <laughs> that's probably also true. That's kind of starting to look like build your own center. Yeah, build your own center. Did we make it? Complete mess of that? Yeah, we did make a complete mess of that. Oh well, it's all broken. Anyway. You say that was had a door sill? That's a door sill. Yeah. It's like from inside the car. And here we have the wing. I think the most impressive part about this, for the size of it, is it literally weighs. I mean, literally can balance it on a finger. That is a couple of keys. This as tall as a person. Taller. I mean, that's yeah. From bottom to top, that must be a two meter long part. That weighs nothing. Now you understand why that thing's so fast. <laughs> what was this for? Because why do Certainly you have something... Lamborghini bubble wrap? I was just thinking that. Oh. I have absolutely no idea. It's actually Lamborghini bubble wrap. Well, it's a Lamborghini sticker on bubble wrap, which means it must have had a Lamborghini part within it. Well, I haven't yet owned a Lamborghini, so... This is what's confusing me. I don't know. Oh, it must have been from the body shop. It must have been from where this was all fixed and packaged up. Ah, they have done Lamborghini, so it's unrelated. Course. Okay. Yeah. Not mine. I haven't broken a Lamborghini yet. I was wondering. Yeah, like, yeah I have never Is there a it. secret Diana <laughs> we don't know about? No, nothing like that. The question now, though, is that given we have a lot of parts of a McLaren Senna here, in fact, that is obviously most of the side of the car, he says, trying not to damage the GTA process. Are we going to take all of these parts and kind of put them that would actually be really cool, wouldn't it? To have these hanging off the wall and make like... That's what we were wondering earlier when Tom was looking around, where to put all of this stuff. You liking this? Maybe not right here, but... Maybe not right there, but something like that is definitely gonna be quite stand out, isn't it? That would be a really cool piece. Yeah, because this wall, we're thinking to make more like a, a mural type thing at the end. Or well, maybe we hang them from the ceiling above the center as a constant reminder. <laughs> Imagine if something fell. <laughs> That's already been damaged. What's yeah, true. Happen? But hanging from the ceiling could be kind of cool, like an exploded car. Yes. Or exploded center. Exploded center. I mean, here is our exploded center. We've got enough bits of it to have a good go. And then there's the wheel as well. This is really cool to have. Obviously, these parts can never go back on a car because they are like insurance replacement parts. Um, it's interesting to see what it looks like though. Obviously when it happened, this is where the wheel of the front wheel of the truck basically mutated this, crunched through the carbon. And this is mostly PPF, so it would actually peel away. There are a couple of cracks there back here as well. That's the worst bit. Hence why this very expensive piece needed replacing at vast expense. In fact, what you're looking at on the floor here is enough to go and buy a nice supercar. <laughs> it's mad. A couple of nice supercars. <laughs> a couple of nice supercars. <laughs> Did you get any of the glass on you when, when it occurred? Not really. I mean, it, it shattered, but not on, on me. There was no real major damage inside. I think there was one small crack on, or a small scratch on that piece, which is why that was replaced. The rest, That's quite fortunate then. Yeah, the rest all good. Now that all of that is sorted, it is time to show you what we have in these two boxes. And for the purpose, We've got these 15 year old deck chairs. I think I got these when I was at school. The plastic inside them is basically disintegrating, but for the moment they work. Anyway, we've got the one box from Koenigsegg that we will get to in a moment. We've got this box though from Gumball 3000. Now I'm looking forward to showing you a little bit what we've got here. Gumball 3000 baseball cap. Gumball do a lot of different merchandise, which is always really fun when it comes around to the rallies. And then we have this, the invitation. Let me show you exactly what we have got inside here he says there's a letter in here as well i think lost it there we go tim toronto to havana hope to see you on the rally next year regards maximilian which is really cool invitation to this the next year gumball 3000 toronto to havana rally toronto indy 500 nashville atlanta miami havana cuba now the cool thing about this is it's the 22nd Gumball 3000, which will now happen in 2022. This is the rally that was supposed to happen in 2020. We all know what happened then. Postponed to 2021, still travel restrictions, etc. So now to the Indy 500 in May and June 2022. 3,000 miles, 120 cars, really awesome. Hopefully gonna be there. We shall see 
as it draws a little bit nearer. But let me show you what else we've got in here from Gumball stickers. Loads of those to throw out when we're on the rally. Always good fun with you guys. Keychains, those kind of bits and pieces. Hot Wheels. Now I've really been getting far too into my Hot Wheels recently. We've got the Then and Now series GT40. We've got the Agera R with the Gumball livery on it. That's kind of cool as well. Um, I'd love to do something with Hot Wheels, which would be quite fun as well, involving some of these. We'll see if that can happen maybe down the line. This box, I'm not even sure what's in this box. Let's find out together. He says, I still don't know what's in this box. Another box. <laughs> it's like past the parcel right now. Learning as I go. Oh, that's fun. Carrera, Eyewear, Mykonos, Ibiza. That was the rally in 2019. This is probably sunglasses. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's actually really quite nice. What do we have inside here? Set of, oh, losing bits. Set of Gumball 3000 sunglasses. It's quite fun. Bits and pieces. Glasses case. Oh, another pair. That's awesome. I love these kind of things. There's so many memorabilia things that I've got here. But over time, we're going to unwrap it all, unbox it all and show you all the bits and pieces and try and get it all on display. That'll be the really cool thing. I don't know why I'm trying to pack that up. I'm gonna leave that until a little bit later because the main thing that we have here is neatly packaged at the bottom, this, the Gumball 3000 official book, 20 years on the road. This is really very, very nice, beautifully presented. And then if I carefully pull this out, check this out, this is basically there we've got all the spirit of the Gumball winners. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. From Max, Gumball family. It's such a family on the Gumball rally. And this is just absolutely lovely. All the previous years, bits and pieces, memorabilia, images. I'd be willing to bet that there's at least one or two of my cars that would make an appearance in this because I've now done quite a few runs on the Gumball 3000. Look at this. It's always such an incredible event. So much fun. So many people around. Such a crowd. This is in Japan. Remember this one? Oh, there we are. I found myself by complete chance. My AMG GTR on the uh, 20th anniversary rally London to Tokyo. What a lovely thing. That is, of course, going to be sitting pride of place almost in here. Anyway, let me package all of this back up and we'll have a look in the Koenigsegg box. All of that is now boxed back up for the time being so it doesn't get too dusty until we can get all of these bits and pieces out on display. Now we've got the package that has come from Angleholm in Sweden. Now I've not opened this up yet. We've got, oh, oh, that's quite fun. Check this out. <laughs> for baking, Ghost Squadron, the Koenigsegg Ghost. That's actually really quite cool, even with the Koenigsegg logo on the side. This is. There's so much cool stuff like this in this room that's just completely and totally random that I've never really had a way to share with you guys, which is what I'm so excited about this, I guess, channel and opportunity to be able to do to show you more of, more of the behind the scenes. So I don't, I don't know what we've got in here. What is this? Oh, that's also pretty fun. <laughs> Koenigsegg coloring book. <laughs> I nearly coughed from laughing. That's quite fun. What do we have in here? Literally, yes, go absolute. Jamira. <laughs> Koenigsegg coloring book. I think they sent a pack of this out to all Koenigsegg owners, so I feel very privileged that I've received a copy as well. We've got the Yesco hat, Yesco baseball hat. I've got quite a few baseball hats in my collection now. I probably need to come up with a cool way to share and show those as well. Um, more bits and pieces. How does this work? Plenty of bubble wrap here for, for days. That, oh, nice Koenigsegg notepad. That's actually quite nice. Koenigsegg logo on the front. Little notepad. Ah, oh, and then, yes, I could have seen this one coming. The Speed Champions Yesco. So I now have two Yescos. We'll have to make one and keep one looking very nice. Try and hunt down Christian and get this signed like the Bugatti Chiron one. Anything else lurking in here? No, that's cool. That's really nice of them. Thanks to Koenigsegg and of course, thanks to Max and the team at Gumball 3000. That is very exciting to see, well, maybe on the rally next year. We've got a bit of a plan. Thank you. I'm gonna build this, but you're gonna go and wash the car. So this is the plan. Puppy's gonna build the Esco and Tom and I are gonna take the 675LT outside to go and try and get this cleaned up to sort out some of this, well, bits of field 
that it's accumulated. In fact, yeah, I thought that might be the case. <laughs> um, yeah, we've literally got bits of straw inside the air vents. So we'll pull this on outside and uh, have a go with some of the bits and pieces and equipment at making it a little bit tidier. Not gonna lie, I think I have the better time though. <laughs> Probably. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna time it. She definitely has the cleaner job. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me go get the shafty. You get that started up. Oh, that's filthy underneath. Absolutely dirty and grimy. Nice, okay. Shutter going up. We'll get that outside. One of the things, by the way, I've seen some of you guys wondering about wash bays and how we're going to do this. But actually, out here, we have a purpose built area with the required drainage, hose and bits and pieces to pull the car out. I'm not showing too much of the outside because it is actually a work in progress. We still need to get some more concrete for the areas outside here to get all of this completed and get everything cleaned up a little bit as well. Second, make some progress with this. So while Tom is very kindly giving the LT a rinse down, I'm gonna head back indoors for the moment to get the shutter closed on down. We've also picked up a whiteboard, by the way, to keep notes of various bits and pieces. We need to get all of this stuff mounted up properly, but to keep an idea of plans of what we want to do next with the space. Obviously, we were lucky to have a lot of space inside here and still very much working out what's going to happen next, where, how exactly. Obviously, as I just said, the concrete shortage for outside is not particularly helpful. But we also need to be thinking a little bit about what we're going to be doing next inside here. For example, the build of the office with this space uh, and how we're going to find the steel to put up the mezzanine. That's also a shortage at the moment and where exactly the cars are going to end up. And I've now realised that we've boxed in the G with all of the parts that we've unloaded. So I need to go and put those somewhere at some point. Over here though, how's the build coming along? So don't interrupt me, I'm on a mission. I shall leave you be. We're very quickly accumulating a lot of stuff here. We do now have our Excite fridge filled with Excite. Big thanks to the guys. And uh, yeah, let's go see what's happening outside. No phone time. Always very fun. When we see it being done at Topaz when the cars get their PPS and that kind of stuff. It helps with loosening anything on the surface and effectively pulling it off. And this clearly has a lot on it, as well as having to look quite cool in the process. Nearly finished. Yes. On the wheels. On the wheels. So we have two sets of wheels, which is actually quite nice. Um, but yeah. Ah, because you've got the carbon wheels and you've got the normal wheels, just there like on the real car. Although this is the Yesco track, you can't build the Yesco Absolute, which is the one without the boomerang wing. So is that it? Is this the end? Done. And the mechanic, don't forget the mechanic or the racing driver. I even. think it's the racing driver. Yeah, he's the driver. You <laughs> can also swap the helmet for his hair, which is quite cool. But yeah. Done. 38 minutes. Success. And I think Tom's still washing the car, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Competitive by nature. <laughs> so Tom has done a pretty nice job, but unfortunately the weather is not looking so good. It is about to thunderstorm. So we need to quite quickly now get this car indoors to dry it off, which is the beauty of having a small kind of entrance just in front of the door. Um, I'll do the honors then. Get it started. Take it all in. mess of the uh, floor but it does need a proper clean this is really dirty and dusty and everything we will get a proper cleaner to do that we will get a proper like ride on something or other we've just been drying down the car but this was literally just in time it is now pouring with rain outside here so uh yeah a few more minutes and that would not have worked um <laughs> onwards what you're doing i'm making a gap in the flat like a door like a door. Yes. That's a good shout. A flag door because we keep kind of just going through them like this and it's, <laughs> it's a little bit awkward sometimes. If we just do that, then at least there's kind of a natural go through here and life's a little bit easier. And now I can make. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm delirious. It was a long weekend at Goodwood. What I else is going on? I have a question for you though. Yeah? Where's the M8? Where is the M8? Good question. This is the question, the million dollar question that everybody seems to want to know. Where is the BMW M8 that I had 
from Germany last year. Well, it arrived obviously a little bit later than planned because the manufacturing delays as factories were closed at the start of 2020. At the end of 2020, when we quickly realized that the chance to be back in Germany anytime soon was very slim. And in fact, I've only spent about a week in Germany since the car departed from the garage in what was it, October, November last year? I think something along around then. Lines. So in the last nine months, I've spent seven days in Germany, hence why the German registered car was not going to stick around in the garage. So now everyone knows, where is the BMW M8? It left last year, which I did actually say when we went to the BMW M studio in M Town to announce the M3, yes. to reveal that the M3 competition was joining the garage. I did say at the start of that video that the M8 was departing then, or maybe that it had already departed. Anyway, that's where the M8 is. Another quick update. Thanks to those of you guys who have been helping with this and to Tom who's been instrumental in it. We're making some progress with the computers here and parts. Basically, we need a few more parts and then hopefully it will get up and running again. And what parts do we fun. need? Because to me, this looks... Basically, know, yeah, RAM, this memory, power supplies, because everything's just been shaken around a little bit too much and hopefully it's not going to be too expensive. I mean, the funny thing is, obviously, this is from the 90s. These are basically quite old computers that aren't particularly expensive in terms of parts. It's just the expertise to have the knowledge to get all of this up and running and to work out how to open it, obviously with these seat parts that fold backwards. So hopefully, hopefully it won't be too long. In the meantime, Tom is very kindly trying off the uh, 675LT. As for the first time in here, we can hear quite a lot of the rain noise. Normally in here with the insulated roof and the insulated walls, you don't hear it at all. But right now it is unpleasant outside. The fun part then of doing this on the 675 is that you have this very, very, very awkward uh, carbon piece that holds the rear window open. And then you have to work out how to actually lock it. And this always puts fingerprints on it. There's no way to do it. Otherwise, nope, failed. It's very difficult to work this one out. You have to twist it, lock it down. There we go, that side's down. And then it's the opposite way. So on that side it twists that way, on this side it twists that way, which is nice and confusing. And that goes in there, press it down, let go. That is now closed and you've got some fingerprints to wipe off. They didn't make that easy, but it's lightweight. And that's what it's all about. Anyway, we're gonna move this and get it parked. assume it's something to do with the weather. We do have our emergency lighting on though. But we have no power at all. Which has just gone off. It's really um, odd. It is. It's a strange sensation to be here in the dark. Night it's, it's at the museum. <laughs> night <laughs> at the <this> museum. <laughs> it's also surprisingly light in here still. But that is not good. Time to go and check out the alarms and stuff and work out what is what right now. A round of hide and seek in the yes. dark. We can actually go uh, with this. Boom, well, geez, turn on the light. Right. Yes, it is. And then it gets like super reflective when you point at a number plate or something. That came in the dark with the light on it. So nice. It is That's very nice. Show, clean that car is. The results of Tom's, the results of Tom's work to make this look so lovely and shiny and clean. Um, oh, we've totally lost focus on the camera. That was always going to happen in the dark. Okay, let's go work out what's gone on and hopefully get some power back because this is not good. The good news is that we've got the power back. That was, of course, our first experience of a power cut here at the Schmuseum, but interesting to see the emergency lighting staying on, although it was pretty dark indoors. The other thing is that it sounds like we no longer have 
those crazy thunderstorms, which is going to be a little bit more pleasant for heading on. It was pretty bad earlier on. But hey, another late night here at the Museum today. Tom helped clean up the 675LT Spider, which is looking beautiful. Some of the other cars are in dire need of a clean because I haven't really done a very good job of this recently while everything was over at different storage locations. So the Taycan is filthy, the M3 is filthy, and the G63 is parked amusingly because I'm going to head out with that shortly, which is also filthy. The GT8 is nice and clean. Center in the GT could do with a little touch up. So maybe that's one for next time around. But today, a bit of a vlog again here at the Schmuseum, opening and unpacking the boxes from Gumball 3000 and from Koenigsegg. Big thanks to Max and the team at Gumball for the invitation to next year's rally. Hopefully we can pull that off and go from Toronto to Havana. Been looking forward to the idea of that route for a while. So that would be really, very, very cool. Let's see what happens. And of course, also to Koenigsegg for the Yesco model and other bits and pieces as well. That's pretty cool as well. There's in fact a huge stash of Lego that we're gonna have to build at some point soon. We've got a lot of different models that we'll need to somehow work out the best possible way to display. Anyway, there's a lot more going on. Of course, we're still in the very early stages of this build. A huge thanks, as always, to our partners at eBay and SeaTech for making all of this possible. And of course, to you guys for joining the adventure. That's it for today, though, from here at the Museum.